Chimping. Now, I had no idea what chimping was. I uh, never heard of it. Apparently what it is, when you take a photo and then you quickly, and then you immediately look at each photo. So take a photo, have a look at it. Take a photo, have a look at it. That's called chimping or, or showing other people. So take a photo, you go have a look at that. Jerry, look. You see that? You see the photo? Yes. They got the name from chimping from when someone took a photo, they looked at it and they went ooh 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 ooh, 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 ooh like a like a like a monkey. Now that that to me is pretty lame. So I've come up with my own acronyms. The best thing about chimping is you want to check that you're in focus. You want to check that. You know, it's a tool that you use. I mean, these some of these photo snobs go back to the film age. You know, I mean, how how easy is it? You've got the you've got the tool now. Technology has now seen where you can instantly take a photo and have a look at it. So why not use it? It's like a a quick metering mesh. You know, I think one guy even wrote on a forum. You know, you know, chimping is now the new metering. So really. You know, take a photo, no, that's overexposed. And especially now, if you've got the blinkies, you can check the, the highlights and, and the shadows. You can check that, you know, you won't see that through your eye. You can chimp and check the screen and review the photo and say, oh shit, that's completely blown out. There. Are you a chimpanzee, Jerry? Oh, you. So let's take a look through the playback menu. Now everyone knows how to do this, but it's, uh, there's a few tips here I can show you extra that you probably don't know about. So basically you just have to press the play button on the back <clears throat> and that'll take you from the camera straight into the playback. You can use your left and right arrows to go through each photo individually. The front dial can also do it and the back dial will zoom in. If you zoom, once you're out and you zoom backwards, it takes you to the grid view. And then from here, you can select what you want that way. And if you go one more, it takes you to a calendar view. So you can see on the third, on the first of, the, of November, if you hit the function one button, it brings up a small rectangle box where you can zoom in so and you can change the so if I want to zoom in to a particular area so for instance on Jerry's eye there hit F1 again and it takes you straight in one of the main things you want to use hit the info key and that'll take you to this information panel and then on here you can see what settings that you took the photo at, an image of the shot and your histogram over here. One of the good features is if you see the little green dot there, the green square on Jerry's nose, that's saying where I focused. The little blinkies there, that's showing you the blown out highlights. And if you go to a darker area, you'll see it blinking blue. There's one there that's showing that that's, that's completely dark and you can't recover that. Now for that to actually show up, you have to have a setting for that. Custom menu, display, PC, there's info settings. This one is the info of the playback. And then in here, you can have uh, show the image only, have overall, you can put the histogram on and you can here put the highlights and shadows on. So now when you go to the playback menu, you'll, when you're on the single shot, you can see the histogram. If you cycle through the info key, it will show you the highlights and shadows. That's just the image only. That's some information. And so you can just, and then that's the full information with the highlights and shadows and the Instagram histogram all at once. There's another setting here. So 
in your grid view, you can have four, nine, 25, or 100 photos. Um, you can put my clips on and calendar, so you can turn them on and off here. This light box one, um, what that does is you can compare two photos. So you go into play, pick the photo that you want to compare to another photo. You hit the info key a few times, and then it takes you to this compare image thing. So now that's that's the original photo on the left hand side and then you can pick another photo to compare it with. Another thing is if you're zooming in, so for instance I'm zooming in there, all right, now if I hit the info key, now I'm zoom, I can now move to the next picture at that uh, magnification. If you want to protect a picture so you don't accidentally delete it in camera you hit the function 2 button and that puts a little key there and that means that's protected so it won't be deleted. Hit it again and then it'll turn it off. Obviously if you want to delete something you just hit the little delete button on the back and it gives you a confirmation if you want to delete it or not. If you don't want a confirmation and you continue, if you if you delete a lot of photos and you don't and you and you couldn't be asked with that confirmation, you can turn that on off. In the custom menu, there's a thing called record erase. So in here, quick erase, you can turn that on, and then that won't ask you, do you really want to delete that file? It'll just go ahead and delete it. If you want to play a movie you'll see a movie icon and that'll play the movie so if you want to go frame by frame or you want to go faster you can just press the left and right button but if you hit the OK it pauses it and if you just do right and left it'll go frame by frame well near abouts as <laughs> Jerry's tail and then if you hit the down button it takes you to the end if you hit the up button the up arrow it takes you to the start now there's a feature in here where you can edit the actual images now i don't know why you'd ever want to do this maybe if you're out in the field and you want to edit and send it to someone it doesn't have many options if you've got a jpeg and a raw you'll see that it both comes up here edit jpeg or edit raw you can adjust shadows, you can get rid of red eye, you can crop like that, you can crop stuff if you want in camera, you can change their aspect ratio, you can change it to black and white, sepia, saturation, what's this one do? Okay this one lowered the resolution, <clears throat> I'm not sure why you would need this, maybe if you want to reduce the size of the file if you want to send it over your 56k modem I mean that's ridiculous and then ePortrait and what ePortrait does is it smooths the skin a bit it'll only do it if it detects a face let's see if it if it knows Jerry no if you want to make my clips movies I've made a video about my clips I'll put it all in the description you can add the clip here to the my clips movie that you're making share order that's a feature where you can select some images and then when you connect it to your phone they'll be the first ones to upload so i'll show you that later <clears throat> that's the lock this one here you can actually add some voice a recording to each photo so if you click on that and start recording you know this is a photo that I took and the sky was completely blown out Roberto you are a loser it puts a little music symbol on it to say that that's got a recording on it you can rotate an image if you want this one here is a slideshow if you click on that, you can start a slideshow of all the video of all the pictures that are in your on your on your on your card. You can even add a background music if you want. 
I've made another video, I'll put the link as well, where you can download other songs you can put in the slideshow. <clears throat> That's really good if you're showing, you know, family, you can connect through HDMI to your TV. You'd need to have one of these HDMI cables. So that's the normal HDMI that goes into the TV. And then this one is the micro HDMI, which then goes into the corner here. You can actually even use that as a screen. So what you can do now is just go to playback. And there you go. You can see the photos. If, you, if you're not happy with the buttons, you can also use the touch screen. So left, right. Also, you can, there's a little thing down the bottom here. If you touch it once, you can zoom in with the little arrow there, like that. Have the tick on, you can share, you can protect it. You can go into the grid view. There's a feature called share order. Now what that does is you select the photos that you want to upload to your phone first in that order. So you can, if you've got a hundred photos in your, on your camera and you only want to upload like 10 of them, you, you select share order and then you hit the up key and that puts a little share icon there. You can move to the next one, click that one click that one so that's and then hit OK and now if you go and you see that that icon is there saying that these ones will be uploaded first to your photo to your to your camera if you want to do it another way you can use this feature called where it puts a little tick now it's actually the record button is the little tick it's got a little symbol on there I didn't ever noticed it before but the record button ticks things so I want to tick that one if you want to do stuff in batch, tick that one. And then when you press OK now, it'll say these ones that you just selected, mark them as share order, or you can write protect them, or you can erase them. If you want to connect the camera to the OI Share app, turn on Wi-Fi. So you go to the little spanner icon there and click on Wi-Fi. Just put it on private. Then you open up your OI Share, Olympus Share app. You've got to download it. Now, if you see the little icon up here, you can click on that. And then it's saying Wi-Fi starting. Click on this button down here. Go to Easy Setup. And then press Scan. Just scan that code thing there okay and what you've got to do you've got to leave it on that screen okay don't move away from that screen and then here go to start setup okay now it's trying to find it now i to tell you straight up the app connecting to the phone is crap i mean it loses it when you move from one menu to another it doesn't work it you have been trying to re get to it again it says you've already connected it's just shit so now you press close uh there are three so there you go so remember when i shared the order with those three images uh, now it's saying when i when i finally connected to the camera through wi-fi it's saying hey those three images marked by share order in the camera so you can either import them now or share them or do it later so if you want to import them now they're those three photos that i that i marked for share and it's going to download them now it's downloading them but i've got no idea where it puts them on the phone they don't turn up in my gallery i think they're in some other special gallery so you have to go into if you've got an android phone You've got to go into like the the folder view. I never use this crap anyway, so uh, if I want to, you know, photos, I just take them off the camera. What I use this for, so I just cancel that. What I like to use this for 
is the remote control. That's the best part of it. So I just use it for this. You go to remote control and there and then take photos. So you can change aperture priorities, you know, even art filters if you want. And then art filters here. Aperture priority in here. You can change the aperture and take a photo. Jerry! Yes! See, there's a bit of a delay there. You see, Jerry? You take the photo remotely. Jerry, are you sleeping? Why are you sleeping? It's the middle of the day, Jerry. Come on, Jerry. We'll take some photos. What's the matter? I did it. 